So this is going to be section 1.5 of my pre-algebra series, Evaluating Algebraic Expressions. So the basic idea is pretty straightforward, I think. So the idea is you'll be given algebraic expressions. So for an example, here's an algebraic expression, along with some variables. So I've got one, two, three, four variables in here. And what's going to happen is we're going to assign values to each of those variables. And all we're going to do is we're just going to take our algebraic expression, substitute in those values in the appropriate place, We'll replace all of the variables with their values, and then we'll just simplify down. So nothing, nothing too crazy here. We'll just leave that there. Okay, so, so let's go back to our example here, and let's simplify that down. So it says we have 2 times b. Well, we said that b is equal to 3, so I'm just going to put 3 here, minus 4 times the value of a, which we said is negative 2. And I like to put things in parentheses when I substitute. Let's see, we've got 3 times c. We said c is equal to just the value of 1, plus 2 times d, which is 5. And now we can do the arithmetic. So let's see, 2 times 3 in the numerator, that's 6. Negative 4 times negative 2, that's going to be positive 8. And then in the denominator, we have 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2 times 5, which is 10. Let's see, 6 plus 8, that is going to be 14 over 10 plus 3, that's 13. Notice 13 is a prime number, so we can't factor it, and since the top is definitely not a multiple of 13, I can say that this is already reduced, just in case somebody does say, hey, make sure that your expressions are reduced. So 14 over 13 would be our solution, and that would be our reduced solution. So let's just do a couple more. I mean, there's really not much more to it than just, you're just, I always say plugging and chugging is what I'm saying. So I think I've got the same values, not quite. I changed my values a little bit. So I've got A is negative two, B is equal to three, C is equal to negative four, and D is equal to six. And we're just gonna evaluate all of these expressions. So some of these I'll go through a little bit faster. So two times C, that's gonna be C is negative four. There's my minus 5. We said b was equal to 3, so I'll substitute in 3. 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8. Negative 5 times positive 3 is going to be a negative 15. And negative 8 minus 15, since they're the same sign, I could add their absolute value. So 8 plus 15 is, would be 23, but again, they're both negative, so I need to keep that negative. Okay, so here we need to be a little careful. There's my outer set of parentheses, and then I've got my negative, and then it says we're plugging in three for b, and we're squaring that, plus three. So sometimes people would get a little confused, I think about the, people sometimes get confused with signs and exponents. So this one I think hopefully isn't too bad. So the idea is, well, inside the parentheses, I've just got negative three, still being, squared. So the negative times the 3 is just negative 3 plus 3. Well, negative 3 squared, recall that that simply means we're taking negative 3 times negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be positive 9. I still have my other positive 3 left over, which is going to be positive 12. So let's keep simplifying here. So let's see. Let's copy these values. Okay, so we'll put those in there real quick. Those are our values just to refer to them. So, okay, let's go through it. So 3 times D, we said D is equal to 6 minus 2 times B, which is going to be 3. And then we've got 4 times A, which is negative 2, plus B, which is equal to 3. And you, you could certainly omit the parentheses on that one if you wanted to. But again, it doesn't hurt to include them. So I'm going to simplify. 3 times 6, that's 18. Negative 2 times 3, that's negative 6. That's 18 minus 6, or 12. In the denominator, 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. Negative 8 plus 3 is going to give me negative 5, and that would be my solution. Okay, so the next one, we have c squared minus a squared. Well, c is negative 4, that's being squared, minus a, which is negative 2, squared. So negative 4 times negative 4 right? That's what this first part means. So we've got negative 4 times negative 4, 
minus a negative 2 times a negative 2. So I'm going to say, well, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. There's my negative. And then I've got negative 2 times negative 2. That's going to be a positive 4. So 6 minus 4 is going to be equal to 12. Okay, let's see. D to the third minus B to the third. So D, we said, was equal to 6. So 6 to the third minus B, which we said is 3 to the third. Let's see. So this is going to be 6 times 6 times 6 minus 3 times 3 times 3. Well, let's see. What's 6 times 6 times 6? Do you know that one? So let's see. I could multiply 6 times 6. That would be 36. And then if I multiply that by another 6, 6 and 6 is going to be 36. 6 times 3 is 18, plus the 3 is going to be uh, 21. So 6 times 6 times 6 is going to give me 216, minus 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 would be 27. And I'll let you simplify that down. Okay, so the same question here. So here we have the quantity d minus b multiplied by d squared plus db plus b squared. And I'm going to let you simplify these down as well. So if we rewrite this, we've got d, which we said was equal to 6, minus b, which is going to be equal to 3. So I'm just using my values that we had previously, the same values that we were just using. Okay, so... Let's keep, okay, so there we go. So d squared, we said is 6 squared, went a little too far, plus d times b, so that's going to be 6 times 3, plus b squared. And again, I'm not putting these in parentheses just because the values of d and b are both positive. So 3 squared. So what you can do is simplify this, and what you should do at the end of it is compare the answer you get here with the answer you get here. And then think about this follow-up question. Is it true that this expression on the left equals this expression on the right? And how could you prove that or potentially disprove that statement? Think about that. That's the kind of things that mathematicians think about. When can you prove something to be true or false? Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about in this section, again, I think it would be relatively intuitive. We're going to talk about if a given value makes a statement false, true or false. <clears throat> so we've got this, this equation, x minus 7 equals 2y plus 5. That's my first example. And again, I have these values, x equals 22 and y equals 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute those values into that equation just like before. So I've got x equals 22, there's my minus 7, and what I'm really asking myself is, are these two things going to be equal? So let's see, 2 times y, that's 2 times 5, plus 5. Well, let's see, 22 minus 7, that's going to be 15. 2 times 5 is positive 10. Positive 10 plus 5 is going to be positive 15. Hey, yes, those two things are, in fact, equal. So we would simply say this is a true statement, right? It makes sense. Those two things are equal. That's true. Well, you can probably guess what's going to happen on the next one. So here we have the, uh, the quantity, or excuse me, 2 times the quantity x plus y equals 2x plus y. x equals negative 4, y equals negative 2. Let's just plug them in. So 2 times x, which is negative 4, plus y, which is negative 2. And then we have 2 times x, which is negative 4, plus y, which is negative 2. So we could simplify here a little bit. So we've got 2 on the left, and negative 4 plus negative 2. That's the same thing as negative 4 minus 2, and that's going to give us negative 6. So we've got 2 times negative 6 on the left, and again, we're really asking ourselves, are these equal or not? If they are, it's true. If not, it's false. So 2 times negative 4 on the right, a positive and a negative is a negative. 2 times 4 is 8. A positive times a negative, that's going to be a negative. And I think you can see pretty quickly here, we've, on the left, we've got a positive times a negative, which is going to be a negative. That's going to be negative 12. Does that equal, well, let's see, negative 8 minus 2, that's negative 10. So those are definitely not equal. So we would simply say that this statement is false. 
And that's all there is to it. You're just, again, just substituting in those values and looking to see if you get the same number. And notice, just to go revisit this example really quickly, remember if you did distribution, we would have 2 times x, which we have, but then we should get a positive 2 times y, right? We should be getting 2x plus 2y. So that's another way to recognize immediately that these aren't equal because uh, if you we were distributing, we should get 2x plus 2y, and clearly that's not what we're getting. But this is simply another way to verify that that statement is in fact not true.